Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for April 21st, 2022. This year, I believe that God wants us to experience not just progress, but that we need to be intentional and deliberate about the pursuit of that progress. So I'm I'm flowing in this vein all year. I've been teaching different things. This past Sunday was Resurrection Sunday morning, where we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that's the most significant event in the history of history, right? The resurrection of Jesus from the dead. We serve a living Savior. Jesus is his name. And so this week, I've been teaching about the importance of the resurrection and things that happen after the resurrection and how things are different under the new covenant versus versus the old covenant. And so I dealt with a lot of that teaching leading up to the resurrection, but now I want to teach something today that I believe is paramount. So I want you to prepare your heart to receive what God is about to pour into it. He's going to make a deposit of righteousness in your heart through me for his glory today. Get ready to receive the word. All right, so let's get into the word. The title of today's message is What the Resurrection of Jesus Means to You, Part 4. Jesus took us from servants to sons. I've told you before, I've said, hey, say this. Say, I'm not a slave. I'm not a servant. I'm a son. And and I'll tell you, put it in the chat. And people put it in the chat. I'm not a slave. I'm not a servant. I'm a son. I've had you to make the statement, but now I'm going to teach you this morning from the scriptures. You ready? So two foundational scriptures that kind of lay the foundation. And then we're going to look at Galatians chapter four, John chapter one. I'm going to look at verse 14 and verse 17. In John chapter one, the Bible says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory and the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus, the word, became flesh. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. All things that were made were made by him. And without him was nothing made that was made. Verse 14 says the word became flesh. Not only that, we beheld his glory. Not only that, he came full of grace and truth. Verse 17 goes on to explain, for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through the Lord Jesus Christ. So in verse 17, John juxtaposes the law and grace. And he says, the law came through Moses on tablets of stone, but through Jesus was given or or grace came. The law was given, but grace came and grace came in the form of Jesus. And so Jesus ushered us into grace and truth. Before I went on spring break, I shared a message with you because I was comparing and contrasting the law and grace that um, where the apostle Paul in Galatians chapter three talked about the law as a tutor or a guardian. And Paul helped us understand that the law was given only for a certain amount of time. And just like a guardian or a nanny, you know, is assigned to a child to protect the child and to keep the child, but only for a specific amount of time, at some point the child grows up. And when the child grows up, it doesn't need the guardian, doesn't need the nanny, right? So Paul said this in Galatians chapter three, Uh, he went on to flow in this vein in Galatians chapter four. So we're going to look at Galatians chapter four, and I'm going to cover verses 1 through 7 today. I'm going to add that to what John said in John 1, 14 and 17. And I believe all of this is going to come together and teach us that through Jesus, we're no longer slaves. We're no longer servants. We are sons. And when I say son, just to be clear, I mean male and female son, right? So so you, you are a son of the Most High God, and I mean men and women. So this is not a gender thing. This is a position thing. You are no longer a slave. You are no longer a servant. You are a son. Let me go into the scriptures. In, in uh, Galatians chapter four, four, Paul said, well, think of it this way. If a father dies and leaves an inheritance for his young children, then those children are not much better off than slaves or servants until they grow up, even though they actually own everything that their father had. They have to obey the guardians that are assigned to them until they eat, until they reached whatever age their father set. So he's saying, 
So let's say somebody's rich and that rich person dies and leaves an inheritance for a two-year-old baby. Okay, well, the two-year-old baby, Paul is saying, is no different than the son of a slave or a servant that died that was poor because the two-year-old baby doesn't know anything about the inheritance. And that person is now, that baby is put under the care of a guardian until whatever age the father set. And so until that time, the person doesn't really receive the fullness of the inheritance and they're not really ready to receive it anyway because they're a child. And so they have to kind of be under a guardian or under a tutor. So Paul paints this picture of, let, you know, let's say you have this person that's an heir to the throne, like a, a, a prince, a little baby prince was a, the son of a king and the king died. Now this baby prince doesn't understand that he owns everything his father had. He's an heir to it. He doesn't understand that because at, because he's a child, he's under the guardian, the, the, the tutelage of a guardian, then he's no different than the child of a slave or a servant. The two little boys, one who's a prince and one who's the child of a servant, they're both clueless about their future, right? They don't understand. All they can do is just follow the instructions of the guardian, follow the instructions of the parent. Whoever was assigned, they just have to follow their, their instructions. They're under their guidance and they're under their tutelage because they don't really know who they are and they don't really know what they have an inheritance to. You got it? Paul goes on. Paul says, and that's the way it was with us before Christ came. So think about that. He's painting this picture. You have a baby prince and you have a child of a, a servant and they're both ignorant of what their inheritance is. One doesn't have much, one has a lot, but they're both ignorant of it. And he says, that's the same way it was before Christ came. We are like children. We were, were past tense, slaves to the basic principles of this world. But when the right time came, God sent his own son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent his son to buy our freedom. So now he bought our freedom and we used to be slaves to the law, but now we're, not lo we're no longer slaves to the law because he bought our freedom so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent his spirit. Uh, watch this. God, now we're children and we're no longer under the law. We're no longer slaves to the law. God bought us, redeemed us with a price. And because we're his sons, God sent the spirit of his son to be in our hearts. And the spirit of his son, the Holy Spirit, now in our hearts prompts us to call out Abba, Father. The word Abba is like daddy. So now the Holy Ghost inside of us causes us to look at our heavenly father as a daddy. Daddy, Father, now you are no longer, the Bible says in plain English, now you are no longer a slave or a servant, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. I want you to, to process that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take my time. I, I, I'm, I'm going to try not to preach this this morning. I have to teach this. God has made you an heir. God has made you his child. And then God gave you the spirit of his son so that you can call out to him, daddy, daddy, just like that, right? Okay, that's what Sunday was all about. Without Jesus dying on the cross, none of this would happen. We would still be slaves to the law and rituals and rights and killing animals and all of that. So what does this mean for you today? This is powerful. I have eight things quick that I'm going to share with you today on, on this morning, and I'm going to try to take my time. And these eight things I believe are going to be a blessing to you. You ready? All right. Number one, excuse me, people who followed God under the law prior to Jesus were like children who were born with a great inheritance, but because they were children, they were clueless of the inheritance that they had. Their ignorance made them no different from slaves or servants. Their ignorance made them no different from people that had no inheritance, right? Because they just didn't know that the inheritance was theirs. So said another way, a person who does not have an inheritance is no different than a person who has an inheritance but is ignorant of it. You know, basically they both live the same way because they don't understand like who they are, what they're called to do or what they, what they have been bequeathed. So believers under the law had a great inheritance coming, but they were ignorant of it. And since they didn't know 
that they were really sons of God. They operated like servants of God. And so the inheritance didn't mean anything to them because they were ignorant of it. So they didn't see themselves as sons. They saw themselves as servants and slaves to the law. That's what the Bible says. So a servant has a much different mindset than a son. Under the law, God's followers saw themselves as servants, not as sons. And so Jesus came to take us from servants to sons. Number two, prior to Jesus, God's people were spiritually no different than non-believers, right? The Holy Spirit lived inside the temple. From time to time, he would come upon people, like he came upon prophets. He came upon people, but he didn't live inside of them. So from that perspective, spiritually speaking, the people who followed God, the children of Israel, and the people who didn't have God, spiritually, they were really no different because they didn't have the Holy Spirit. So Paul says, because of that, they were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. They, they were trying to follow God's laws, right? The Ten Commandments and the 603 other commandments, but they were trying to do it by human effort, human power, human strength, because they didn't have the Holy Spirit. So this meant that they were living their lives as mere humans, and they were slaves to the law, and they saw themselves as servants of God, and they worshiped some disconnected or despondent God that kind of thing. And they had to go through a high priest and they had to hear, hey, they would go to the priest and say, hey, this is, this is, here are our petitions. And the priest would go talk to God and then we had, they would have to wait and the priest would come back and, they would, and they'd be like, what did God say? And, like, and so they was like, what? that's not what we have in the New Testament. Under the new covenant is way different. But that's, Paul is explaining, but that's how it was under the Old Testament. They were servants and they saw themselves as slaves to the law. Number three, in the fullness of time, the Bible says, God sent his own son, Jesus. He was born of a woman so he could be just like us. He was subject to the law in order to fulfill the law. He came to fulfill it. So Paul says, God sent Jesus to buy freedom for us who were, past tense, slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. Think about that. Jesus redeemed us. He, he said, oh, I got the payment. Let me, let me pay, pay in full. What are you paying with? My own blood. He bought us with his own blood. We are now redeemed. And since we're redeemed, we're no longer servants. We're no longer slaves to the law. We are sons of the most high God. This is a critical revelation. You got to get this down in your heart. This is why I'm taking my time today. I need you to get this. If you don't understand this, then you can be under the new covenant, living with an old covenant mindset. If you don't understand this, then you can be today, 2022, we're under the new covenant, but you could be living with an old covenant mindset and you could see yourself as a servant of God and as a slave to the law. And you're praying to some despondent, disconnected God, and you don't even know who you are and you don't see yourself as a son and you don't see God as your daddy. You get it? As a matter of fact, let me just say this. Whenever Jesus talked about, Jesus did mention God, like the term God, when he was talking to people in general, but the problem is that, that the term God is used in a lot of different religions. When Jesus was talking about his heavenly father directly, though, he called him father. He said the father. And so, because he was like, I want y'all to know. And this is what really pissed off the religious people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin. What really got them riled up? What got them riled up was that Jesus claimed to be the son of God. That's what got, see, that's the thing. This is what separated Jesus from the religious people. The religious people were like, oh, we're servants. And Jesus was like, no, he's my heavenly father. And they was like, what? This is blasphemy. He claims to be the son of God. Listen, I'm a son. God is my daddy. And so, so yeah, religious people may have a problem with that because they don't, they don't have that same kind of intimacy. They ain't down like that. They don't have that same type of relationship. Number four, under the law, God's people were slaves to the law and mere servants of God. But under grace, we now look at me, we're sons. And when I say sons, male and female. So the Bible says we're no longer a slave, but God's own child. Listen, now it says you are no longer a slave. You are God's own child. And there's a big difference between a slave and a servant and a son. There's a huge difference there. Number five, Jesus died to deliver us from being slaves to the law, to deliver us from being servants of God. We are now sons. The Bible says, and since you are his child, God has made you his heir. We are sons, once again, male and female sons, 
and we are heirs. We have a great inheritance. I have a great inheritance and I'm no longer ignorant of it because the Bible is teaching me who I am. The Bible is teaching me what I'm an heir to. The Bible is teaching me how to live. I no longer have to go through some priest and wait to come back and what does the priest have to say or anything like that. No, I'm a son. I can go to my daddy directly. Number six, in Romans, Paul said, this is Romans 8 and 17. Now, if we are children, then we're heirs. And if we are heirs, we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Now think about that. Let that sink in for a minute. Paul was like, okay, not only are we children, but if we're children, then we're heirs. And if we're heirs, not only that, we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We get to receive the same inheritance that Jesus received. The father loves you. Look at me, look at me. The father loves you no less than he loved his own son, Jesus. The father sees you on the same level. You are a joint heir. So, so it's like, you know, oh, wait a minute. Let's, let's, you know, such and such died. Let's open up the will. Let's see what the heirs are. Let's see what levels there are to the heirs. No, no, no. God is saying, I don't have levels. You're a joint heir with Jesus. Jesus is on this level and you're on this level. You're on the same level with him. You are, you are an heir. You're my heir, but you're a joint heir with Jesus. So you're on the same level. The father loves you with the same love. He gave you the same Holy Spirit. So, so he gave you the same faith. All of that, you are not a slave. You're not a servant. You're a son and you're an heir. You have son status. God brought you. It's not like God didn't say, let me bring Jesus down to their level. No, no. When you're born again, God brings you up to Jesus's level. You, God brings you up to the level where you're a joint heir with Jesus. Number seven, if you're born again, you are God's son. Once again, male and female son, you're an heir of God. You're a joint heir with Jesus himself and you graduate. What do I graduate from, Rick? You graduate from being a servant. You graduate from being a slave to being a son. And it has nothing to do because with anything you did. It's not like you earned it or you deserved it. No, a son doesn't have to earn it. A son doesn't have to deserve it. A son is a son because they're connected by blood. Come on now. I mean, like a, a son doesn't have to earn me being my son. You're my son. My daughter hasn't have to earn being my daughter. She's my daughter. That's it. And so, so a son is a son, a daughter is a daughter. At the end of the day, it's not because you earned it. It's not because you deserve it. It's because it, there's a blood relationship. And so when you open up your heart, I want you to know that there's a blood relationship between you and the father. Jesus redeemed you with his own blood. And so he did this by his unearned and amazing grace. And the day that you open up your heart to this reality, I'm telling you, this will change you forever. You will never live the same way once you get this down in your heart. Let, number eight, let me explain number eight. Last point for today, as I close, the resurrection of Jesus is so powerful on so many levels that I could teach on this for weeks or months. But for today, I want, I believe the father wants you to meditate on this truth. You are no longer a slave. You are no longer a servant. You are a son of the most high God. Let me explain. A servant is not an owner in the family home or the family property or the family estate. So a servant is there to support the vision of someone else, but they don't own it. So they don't get to walk around the home like they own it because they don't, right? So they're not part of the family. They, they don't have an inheritance, but a son is different. A son can walk around the home like they own it because they do. A son is part of the inheritance. They are in a blood relationship. So when the parents get a new house, the son say, oh, we got a new house. When the parents get a new vehicle, the son say, oh, we got a new car, right? And when, when, if the parents have a business and the business grows and gets a new location, they'll say, hey, our family business is expanding. Even if those jokers are five years old, they'd be like, oh no, this is my family business. Why? Because they know that they're sons and they're heirs and, and it's part of theirs. There's a blood relationship. So they're connected by blood. They're in, in covenant. They're owners in the relationship. They don't have to ask permission to open the fridge. You know, they just go up to the fridge. Everything in here is mine. They don't have to ask permission to get anything out of the pantry. They go into the pantry and just grab all the stuff. Hey, who ate all the, you know, hey, who ate all of that? What? Hey, 
Hey, I ate it because it's mine. Like, you know, I live up in here, you know? And so at the end of the day, when you're a son, you're not a servant. You don't have to walk around like, oh, this ain't mine. No, you walk around like this is mine. And so so there's nothing in the house that I can't lay down on. There's nothing in the house that I can't sit on, eat, whatever I want. Why? Because I'm a son and this is my house and my daddy owns all this stuff and it belongs to me. And so, so my parents worked hard for all this stuff, but it belongs to me. Not because I worked for it, not because I earned it, not because I deserved it, but because I was born into it. Glory to God. I was just born into it. And so guess what? You've been born into it. God sits on the circle of the earth. He, he, he has all things in and under control. The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him and you were born into it. You are his son. You are his child. So when you look at it from that perspective and you know that you're an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ himself, you are not a servant. You get to walk around this planet like you own it because your daddy owns it. And so, so yeah, you walk around like, yeah, what's up, baby? I get up every morning knowing that my calling is calling me. I'm a son of the most high God. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. I've been filled with the same Holy Spirit that Jesus has. So please listen, have this mindset. You, you don't pray like somebody who is praying to some distant or despondent or disconnected God, like you're a servant. Oh God, please. You know, no, no, God doesn't like that. A son doesn't talk like that. A son just walks up to daddy, walks up to mama. Come here, give me a hug. Let me talk to you. Hey, this is going on. And so so pray. Pray like you're in a relationship with your daddy. Pray like God wants to bless you because God wants to bless you because God is good. Because that's the truth. He just wants to bless you because you're his child. He wants to bless you because he, he made plans for you from the foundations of the world. He wants to see you do good because you have his name. He wants to see you do good because you're covered by the blood of his son. He wants to see you do good because he filled you with his own spirit. He wants to see you do good because he actually assigned you to a specific purpose on this planet and he wants you to get it done before you die. You are a child of the most high God. Sunday was about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So no longer are we slaves to the law, going through all the rituals and routines. I'm not focused on the 10 commandments or the 603 more commandments. I'm not a slave to the law. I'm not, I'm not a servant of God. I don't have to go through a priest and wait to come back and the priest come back. Hey, what did God say? None of that. I got a daddy and I can go to him directly. Abba, Father, glory. I love you, daddy. I love you. I love you with all my heart, mind, soul, and soul. I couldn't even love you if without you loving me. Thank you for redeeming me from rituals and routines and, and, and all of that stuff. Thank you, daddy, for giving me a relationship. And thank you, daddy, for helping me to understand that I'm your son. And so I can walk around like I own the joint because I own the joint because my daddy owns it. And so now I'm a son of the most high God. That's what Sunday was about. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ changed everything. I hope it changes your perspective because once it changes your perspective, it's going to change your life. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and say this over your life. Say, Father, there was a time when your followers were mere servants. They followed you by focusing on a set of rules and laws. They didn't have an intimate relationship with you. Jesus died to get us out of that situation. Because of Jesus, I'm no longer a servant or a slave. I'm a son. I have all the rights and privileges of a son. I get to talk to my daddy whenever I want. And you are always there for me. You have given me the authority to operate in your name. Therefore, I am not afraid of Satan or any demonic force. You have given me your spirit so I can know what you're thinking and so that I can perform your will. So I don't enter each day with my head held down like I'm a servant. I enter each day with my head held high knowing that I am a son of the most high God. I have the confidence of knowing that you are on me, in me, with me, and for me. I'm not afraid of any man. I'm not afraid of any force. I am your son. I am an heir and a joint heir with Jesus. I am a world changer. I am an atmosphere setter, and I will leave a mark in this world that will not easily be erased. This is how I know 
greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Tomorrow I'm going to have another one. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, please go to todaysword.org and click on the big red subscribe button. And then you're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. So subscribe. If this message was a blessing to you, I want you to go into the chat. Leave me some comments because I like to read those. And then share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline and with your friends. I love you. God loves you more. Go into this day knowing that you are not a slave. You're not a servant. You're a son. Have an amazing day. God bless you.